speakers. Uh, welcome to this week's live stream for Digital Making at Home as part of the Raspberry Pi Foundation's program this summer. Um, today we've got some really awesome coding for you in Scratch and our theme this week is Out at Sea. So with that in mind, our special guest this week will be doing some coding. I've got Sophie to come on a little bit later, but first off we've got a really amazingly interesting interview uh, with Alastair Davies who's part of the Arabada Initiative. Now, Alistair is a really, really interesting guy, and he's been doing conservation technology for ages and ages, like around about 10 years as far as I know. And so he's done all sorts of cool stuff. He used to work for London Zoo. He's a co-founder of Nature Bites, and now he works on an amazing project using the Raspberry Pi for conservation. So we'll get Alistair on now, and we'll have a couple of quick words with him. Hey, Alistair, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks. Cool. Um, I've just given you a bit of an intro, a quick intro about the whole thing, but I think you might like to explain to the young people watching today exactly what the Arabada Initiative is and how it all works and what you guys get up to because it's amazingly interesting. Yeah, well, thank you. And it's a great intro too. So I use uh, conservation technology all over the world and the Raspberry Pi is right at the heart of that. So a few of the projects I got involved in are things like watching penguins in Antarctica using the Raspberry Pi camera. And one of the most exciting projects I think I've ever done is putting Raspberry Pis on sea turtles. And that's an actual tag that goes on the shell of the turtle. And we use the smallest of the Raspberry Pis, so the zero. I'm not sure if you've all seen it out there, but it's the smallest one out there. And it's great for us because we can put this on the turtle and discover their, their world, their life. It's a fascinating journey to see what sea turtles see in the ocean. That's awesome. And so what, what sort of things, like when you pop a pie on a raspberry, oh, sorry, when you pop a raspberry pie on a turtle, what kind of considerations are there to getting that done, like the, the actual physical considerations of attaching a computer to an animal? Yeah. So if you had it on your desk, and you may have a raspberry pie on your desk right now, you can set it up, plug in the camera, and take photos of you know birds in your garden or anything that's, that's close to you. We have to think about how do you do that on the back of a sea turtle? So we have to think about a battery supply, we have to think about turning the Raspberry Pi on at the right time of day. So you don't want to turn it on in the middle of the night. Um, and the, the fascinating world that it reveals is the life of a sea turtle. So we've even had a camera on one turtle on the bottom of the ocean um, filming another turtle. So two turtles filming each other because they both had cameras on. And you, you get this fascinating world. And some of the most um, interesting footage we've had are things like plastics in the ocean. Because we know plastics in the ocean today are a big problem. And the Raspberry Pi camera on the back of a turtle can tell us how often sea turtles interact with plastic, where they're interacting with plastic, and also even are they eating plastic. Because we can obviously see if they're eating a jellyfish or plastic, uh, plastic bottle or anything else like that. So it's a really good scientific tool. It's not just, uh, you know, for the excitement of seeing what a sea turtle uh, can, you know, a sea turtle's journey is, but a really good scientific tool. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, so what sort of other things have you done with the turtles? Because like you say, you're doing them all over the world, those sorts of things. And like, it's a big problem, obviously, turtles and getting eating pollution and doing those sorts of things. That's a big problem. And so what sort of things are you doing once you get that information back? How do you then take that and sort of make change for conservation? Yeah, so it's all about tracking them as well. You know, if you take your phone outside or you take a computer outside and you use what's called GPS, so that's a, the satellite system that gives you your location. We do the same with sea turtles. And we can track them over tens of thousands of kilometers all around the globe. And with that data, we can then figure out where they, where they rest, where they eat, where they spend most of their time. And that's what you need. You need that data so you can go back and say, in this area where there are a lot of sea turtles, let's make a marine protected area. So you know they're safe from fishing nets or anything like that, which may be um, uh, you know, a problem for them in the ocean. And it's that kind of data that we collect of all of these um, you know, small computers and tracking devices and the, the Raspberry Pi as well. And with that, we can make informed conservation decisions and we can go to the UN, you know, and big bodies and say, we need to do something about the leatherback sea turtle in Trinidad, or we need to do something to help green sea turtles in Principe Islands in West Africa. And that's what really excites me. We're getting that really important data in a way that we can turn it into maps and visualize it and show people what's going on with sea turtles and how we can work to conserve them. That's awesome. I mean, what, like, that's that's um, incredible, the fact that you're saving animals all around the world using technology. And I mean, how did you get involved in that in the first place? Did you want to do that sort of thing when you were very young? Is that something you've been aiming to do your whole life or is this something you just stumbled into? Yeah, so I was always fascinated with, you know, messing around with computers, 
um i was you know one of the kind of um kids that would just you know muck around and just play with programming for the sake of it being cool right i can just make stuff on a screen um, and as i got older i started you know wanting to travel and see the world um one of my first experiences was actually in um barcelona actually i went to one of the beaches there just to go swimming and there was this uh you know plastic pollution on on, on the beach and it, it's kind of like you know made me realize that there's a world out there that i want to help and conserve and maybe i could do something about it so i took all of that kind of creative computing side that i loved you know messing around with and i started to build little um you know mini computers and tracking devices and and things like that and then i went and worked at london zoo and worked with all the scientists there and all the conservationists and we realized there's a whole need for this for this technology there are so many questions we can address um and i i managed to get a job i mean it's it's a great thing to fall into that you can work in this space you know um and it's what it's it's my passion today to use technology in this way to help wildlife um and even hanging out with you today and doing all this cool coding is a it's a great space to be because you know i hope more and more people get involved in the, in this world and, and help us conserve animals yeah definitely i mean that's that's super cool right like being able to take your skills and take your knowledge and then turn them into like a force for good in the world is like that's quite an empowering thing i imagine a sort of like quite an inspiring thing to be able to do do you have like a, a really inspiring tale you can share with the young kids about something that's happened as part of your studies around the world or something that's really cool that happened? So one of the coolest things that happened to me is in Antarctica. Antarctica is, it's like another world. If you ever get to go there, it's its the most fascinating place I've ever seen. But um, we were on what's called a little Zodiac, a little rubber boat, and we were out um, just on the water and someone called a, a minky whale sighting. So there's a minky whale with a calf just, just about 10 meters away from the boat. We're all sitting there waiting, fascinated. Um, and we had a little camera on a pole. It's not like a little, a little boom pole. And we popped the camera in the water. And it, this amazing footage, we're watching it live, of this minky whale looking back at us. But then the whale came up itself out of the water and it was about a meter away. And this huge eye just turned and looked at us. And it was one of those moments in life when you're looking back at a whale, which is just an amazing experience, and it's looking back at you and you suddenly think, what is that whale thinking? So, you know, we're, we're like strange aliens to it, sitting in this weird rubber boat floating around. But we were there trying to figure out, you know, what, what it's like for a whale in Antarctica. Where, where are safe zones for it? Where, where can we help conserve it if, it if it swims away from Antarctica and visits the world out there? How can we protect it? But that moment when the whale looked at me and I looked back, it was it was fascinating. And um, that's a moment in time I'll always remember because, you you know, you're, you're just close to an animal that's just so distant in your in your life. You know, it, it's at the bottom of the ocean. It's, you know, thousands of miles away and suddenly it's right there. And for me, I would I'd love to go back to that moment and relive it a million times over. But um, it'll, it'll always stay with me. That's amazing. Did you think when you were a kid and you were messing around with computers in your bedroom and like knocking up little bits of programming and stuff that it would ever take you there to Antarctica looking in the eye of a whale and anything like that? Never. <laughs> I, don't, I never no. did. I'm, re I'm really glad that I think if, if you love what you do, if you're, if you're mucking around with computers and you're building stuff or you're even creative, like I did loads of creative work at the start. Um, lots of kind of like, you know, um, graphics and Photoshop and making posters and, and so on. But if you if you like what you do, then just then go ahead and use that that you know passion you've got, and and you know get out there. There's no reason why you can't build something yourself, even if even if you're not into hardware, but you're into the software. Then make apps and games and talk about things you love and and explore that. And I think the the trick is then people out there see that you like that and they want to work with you and they want to like come up with ideas and you you meet loads of great friends out there that that help you along the way. And if you're lucky, you end up, you know, getting to do this um, as a job. And um, I hope all of you get to do this as well, because I know I'm lucky to go to these places. And all I want to do is make sure that you can go there as well. So it's all about conservation. But um, definitely never give up mucking around with computers. Take things apart. I used to, like, take TVs apart for no reason just to see what the hell's going on inside. Um, that's a good thing. Like, don't tell your mum and dad, but take things apart. Maybe try and put them back together again. But just do it just you know explore and figure out what you like out there that's cool and so what like moving forward now from doing all the amazing stuff you have done like what are the next steps for the arabata initiative what are the things you're looking forward to doing in the future things that you're going to be changing the world with as we go along 
so I had actually I had a meeting before this uh, this live chat today about uh, tracking crocodiles, and there are, there's an amazing crocodile called a gharial. It's got an amazing long snout, and it lives in Nepal, and it's endangered. A lot of those crocodiles have been lost in fishing nets, and I chatted to a really interesting scientist who wants to go and track them with um, cellular tags. So that's mobile phone technology. So that the tag will wake up, it will, it will basically make a phone call and send the location of the crocodile back to the scientist. And she's going to make these great maps that show all the crocodiles down the river. And then she can say to the local community, don't fish here at this certain time of day. Or if the crocodiles are here when it's a breeding season, then don't fish here. And she's going to make a great difference to the lives of those, those crocodiles. So we're going to try and make a crocodile tag for her, a gharial tag. Um, and I'm really excited about that. It's going to go out, on, out into N Nepal. Um, and that's what kind of keeps me going every day because you get these great projects arrive where, you know, there are very needs for different tools that haven't been made yet. Um, working with her, I think it's going to be a really exciting uh, project moving forward. Is that one of the more interesting things about your job, I guess, is like taking tools that maybe do exist and working out new ways to use those tools, sort of like coming up with an interesting concept and how do we take this thing and use it to solve this problem as well as the other side of that, which is like we don't have a tool that exists. Can we create one? Like Of those two, which one do you enjoy doing more, do you think? Yeah, it can be quite technically challenging because you often get uh, someone saying, can, I, can you take, for example, uh, a device the size of a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 and make it one by one centimeters in size and last for 100 years with a tiny battery? And you're like, that's going to be quite challenging to do. <laughs> um, so you get that a lot, you know, there's a dream of, of those kind of solutions. But the, the technical challenge is always there, but it's also the kind of excitement of can you get there? Um, one example is when you're in the ocean, which is our theme today, there's pressure. When animals that dive deep, that pressure can crush electronics and it can crush devices you make. You're talking thousands of meters down. So you can't just take a normal um, device which works on the surface and expect it to work, but it's got all that pressure pushing against it. It's like those submarines you see that go to the bottom of the ocean as little bubbles. Those submarines are designed as bubble shapes, so all the pressure means that you've got a good uniform shape and it's stronger and it's going to protect the person inside if someone's actually sitting in it. Now, those challenges can take many years to solve, but once you crack it, that's, that's an amazing feeling to know you put a device on a leather back sea turtle, it's gone to the bottom of the ocean, it comes back up and you get data from it. Then you're like, wow, we cracked it. But it, it can take perseverance and a lot of dedication. But um, if you get there, that's the that's the enjoyment of, you know, sitting back and watching your computer in London and you see a ping from a sea turtle in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And it's just fascinating to wonder what that turtle's do, doing and where it's been. That's what that's a, a big buzz in, uh, in what we do. That's amazing. I imagine you have a team of people with different skill sets and things that help you do certain kinds of things. Like you have you know, special engineers who could work out about handling the pressure under the ocean and electronics engineers who could handle the bits and pieces of making computers smaller and easier for you. Like what breadth of skill do you reckon kids can like think about having in order to get to where you are today? Like, do you have to be a programmer or is that just a nice tool to have in your toolkit? There's there are so many different ways to get involved in this. I mean, one of them is awareness. Even if you just like making um, apps and games and graphics, if you can get into awareness campaigns and tell people about the problems out there, that's a great creative side to this. And I started there as well before I went into more kind of electronics. And if you just like programming, if you're not, you don't feel like you like drawing and working that space where you love playing around in something like Scratch or Python or anything like that, then there's loads for you to do as well. Even if it's even if it's just you working on, for example, um, a programming script which takes photographs and sees if there's a penguin inside or not. Maybe you're looking for black or white as colours. That's still really useful in conservation because a scientist out there is going to want to use that. So you should be quite creative too in thinking, what could I do? Can I put a, a camera in my garden and both listen to the, the sounds of birds and take photos and try and figure out, is that photo of the bird the same noise I heard? It's a great challenge, right? There's so much in there that you could then go and think about, how do I achieve that? What tools am I going to use? Which libraries are out there? Who do I talk to to get help? But think up like questions like that and just go and try and answer them yourself. Like, you know, the internet's out there. Use all those tools. Check out all the resources on the Raspberry Pi site and see if you can, you know, do some really interesting things for in nature and wildlife. And get in your garden if you've got a garden. Just get out there and try and, you know, explore. 
Yeah, yeah, that's the thing too. I like the idea that you know, not a lot of people can see that you can put nature, like your love of nature and your love of the outdoors and your love of animals together with technology. They're often considered to be sort of like mutually exclusive, right? Outside and technology. It's usually you think about people working inside, but it's super inspiring to think that you can take that love and take the love of animals and outdoors that you have as well and combine the two to do amazing things all over the world. That's super duper cool. I've loved it. I mean, thank you very much for your time today, Alistair. It's been really, really inspiring. And I hope some of the young people watching have sort of got some good ideas about where they can go moving forward with their love of technology and maybe their love of the outdoors as well. Do you have any last words of advice or any tips you could give young people? Like you've given us a lot of things like food for thought already, but is there one sort of key element you'd like to say to young people before we say goodbye today? Um, I think my key element, key element is if you're out you know, on your bike, you know, in the woods exploring, then you know, go out there and see the world, but just take a moment and like listen to the sounds of birds and go in and explore a tree and look at all the kind of mushrooms growing on it, all the kind of cool stuff out there and never forget that exists. Because for me, you know, you can just go about your everyday life. You can go to school, go do your jobs, walk around and you kind of forget sometimes that it's out there. But once you start playing around in the soil and looking at it and getting fascinated about things like spiders and the, the wildlife out there, there is an amazing world. And when you realize you can use technology to listen to it and watch it and, and help all those amazing species and you know, biodiversity, even cooler, right? Now you can connect the two. So, you know, I, I hope all of you watching get to do what I, I get to do in my day job, but just keep at it. You know, it's a fascinating world out there and we've got to conserve it. That's, that's, my, that's my takeaway. Amazing. That's really cool. Thanks very much for that today. Um, no problem. So yeah, we'll catch you later, Alistair. Keep doing amazing stuff around the world and saving all those animals for us to keep seeing as as you know more and more generations of us keep coming through. Thanks for your work. Thank you. We'll catch you later. That was really cool, right? Like how cool was Alistair and all the stuff that he's doing like around the world? And as you're saying, like if you love tech and you want to use it in those sorts of ways, there are always ways that you can apply your knowledge and all the things that you love to other stuff that you love outside in the world. Just keep on making stuff. I think that was my big takeaway. Just keep doing stuff that you love doing and you'll get there in the end. And so we've got Sophie again with us today. She's uh, coming to do some coding. Um, we've got a really great scratch project that we've thrown together. How are you, Sophie? Are you all right? I'm oh, good, thanks. Yeah, good on you. What did you think of what Alistair had to say about animals and stuff around the world and doing coding and tech? It is like, it's raking up. Hopefully you can inspire some people to go out there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. I, I thought that was brilliant. So you were going to say? I just jumped in on you then. No, sorry. I got confused. My bad. Um, so are you ready to do a bit of coding on Scratch with us today? It's sort of like themed around saving the turtles and sort of like building awareness like Alistair was talking about. Should we crack on with that? Yeah. yeah, awesome, cool. So have you got a Scratch project open? We've got the starter project. The URL is on the screen there for people so they can jump to that one, rpf.io slash dm-turtle. And you should end up with what you're seeing here on Sophie's screen, which is a nice blank project. You've got a turtle, uh, you've got a water bottle, and you've got a jellyfish there on the screen for you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start coding at a piece at a time. When we're finished, we'll have a really amazing game where we can play where the turtles have to dodge the water bottles, but they have to try and eat the jellyfish, and that will raise your health. But if you jump in front of a water bottle and you catch that in your mouth, then you're going to lose quite a bit of health in one go. Uh, so let's crack on with that. So make sure you've got the, oh, you've got the turtle selected there, Sophie. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Let's start with that one. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll get our turtle to move backwards and forwards across the screen. So if you could go to your events menu and grab a when right arrow key pressed. Oh, that's all right. Don't stress it. We'll need one of those in a minute. But yeah, when right arrow key and then another one for when left arrow. Perfect. So make sure they've got the two different arrows chosen, left and right. Could we add up and down? Uh, we can add up and down. Yeah, go for it. So what we'll do is we'll add two more, so up arrow, down arrow, just like that. And then we'll add some motion blocks for them. Brill, okay, so yeah, head to your motion one. So what we want for our left and right, we want our change X by, so you'll see a block that says change X by, so pop them under your left and right arrows. And we want to make sure that when we go left, it's minus 10, and when we go right, it just says 10 in those boxes. So underneath the left arrow, make sure it says minus 10. And then when you test those left and right arrows, you should be able to get your turtle to move side to side. we we'll just test them and see if that does what we want it to do. There we go. Brill. And so now for your up and down ones, you'll want to have change Y by 10 and minus 10. So up is changed by 10 and down is by minus 10. Cool. And now give them a test. Let's see if we can make sure our turtle goes in all directions. That's 
away. And we're Good off. Luck. Nice. All right. So we're started. So the next thing we want to do um, is we've got our variable called health there that's already imported into our project, which is Brill. So underneath your when green flag clicked, in your variables menu, you will see set health to something. We want to set health to zero when we begin. Cool. Make sure it says zero, that's the way. And then underneath that, we want it to be consistently checking. So it should always, always be checking while our game is running to make sure that our health doesn't ever go less than zero, which means our game will go over. So if you grab your forever block and clip that underneath your set health block, that's the way. And then we need an if. So forever, it should be checking if our health is less than zero. So grab an if block from the controls there and slot that into your forever. And then we'll need an operator from the green menu. And so we'll want our less than. So uh, we should have a less than block. Cool. And that should be less than zero. So once our health drops below zero, our game will end. And then we're going to slide our health variable into that first slot. So under your variables menu, you see a nice little round bubble shaped one that says health in it. Just plug that into the first hole. Check to make sure you get the little glow around the hole when you put it in to make sure it's gone in the right place. Cool. Pop it in. Brill. And then the thing we want now is another control block, and we want it to stop all and just plug that inside your if. Okay. That's the one. Slot it in. Awesome. And so what we've got now is we've got a system set up whereby you can drive your turtle around, forwards, backwards, left, right, and we've got one that's checking to make sure your health never drops below zero. So that's really nice. Was there anything else you wanted to add to your turtle at the moment when we're doing this sort of thing? Did you want to like maybe throw a sound in there for when your game finishes or something like that? Um, maybe after we finish. Awesome. I like that. Let's crack on with the business end. So if you select your jellyfish now, because that's the next one, and this guy's a little tricky, but that's all right. So what we'll do is we'll start off by having our jellyfish go to a certain place on the screen and disappear. So when the green flag is clicked under your events, that's the way. We want our jellyfish to go to a specific place. So we want it to go all the way to the top and in the center of our screen. So grab a motion block that says go to X and Y. That's the way. Cool. And we want it to be X0, which is the dead center of our screen. And we want it to be Y200, which will be the very top of our screen. Cool. So if you click the green flag now, we should see our jellyfish shift position to where we want it to go. It should go right to the top. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so the next thing we want it to do is hide. We want it to not be seen by our player. So we go to looks, and you can drag in a hide block underneath your go-to block. Cool. So when you click the green flag now, you should see it go there, and then it will disappear. Off. There we go. Fantastic. So what we've got now is our jellyfish goes to the center at the top, and then it disappears. And what it's going to do now is it's going to keep making copies of itself that can drop down the screen. So grab a forever from our controls. Cool. And then you scroll down a bit in your controls. You see it towards the bottom. It says, "What create clone of myself. And just pop that into your forever block. Done. Cool. And so that there, that little block for the folks at home, what that does is it means that the jellyfish is now going to keep making copies of itself forever. But we don't want it to just make a million copies all at once. So we need to pop a weight in after, the, after that block to make sure it only makes one every so often. So if we slide a weight block in underneath that one, that's it. Okay. Can you just click the little plus? Can you see down the bottom right of your workspace, there's a little magnifying glass with a plus in it, Sophie? Just click that one. I'm having a bit of trouble reading your blocks. Okay. Oh, that's okay. So head back. If you, That's it. On the right-hand side, that's it down the bottom. You'll see next to where all our sprites are, there's a magnifying glass with a little plus sign in it. Just click that one a couple of times. That's it. There we go. Ah, now that's better. Cool, I can read. It's just a bit tricky. My old eyes couldn't see it, I tell you. So inside that weight hole, if you just want to go to the... Uh, operators menu, so the green operators menu, and pop a random block in there. That's the one, so you say pick random, and then you can choose any two numbers you like, right? So when we're making a video game, we like to have randomness so that we're not just getting the same thing pumping out like a machine. So you can choose any two numbers you'd like to be there, and what it will do is we'll pick a random one and wait before it makes another jellyfish. 
Cool. Awesome. So that's perfect. So now what we'll have is we'll have all of these things and we'll start making clones for us. So the first thing we need it to do is when it makes that clone, we want it to show us. So if you go back to your control blocks, you'll see the third one from the bottom says when I start as clone. And it has like a curvy top on it. So we know that that's the start of a new script. So we want when I start as clone. Okay, cool. Nice. And then we want to show. So under looks, you'll see show. Cool. So the first thing it's going to do when it makes a copy of itself is make that visible to the player so they can see it. And then we want it to go to a random spot at the top. So if you grab another go to block from our movement, from our motion menu. Go to. So on. Go to X and Y. That's it. And then we definitely want our Y to be about 200, right? So that's the top of our screen. It will come in at the very top and it will come down the screen for us. So make that 200. And then you can slide another random block into the X position and make it go from minus 200 to plus 200. So it will pick any spot in the width of our screen. That's it. So minus 200 to 200. Awesome. So if you click the green flag now, we should see it start producing a few clones for us. There we go. So it's got one that's popped up there. That's good. Cool. Okay. So that's exactly what we want. So you can stop that now so it doesn't keep making new copies for us. Awesome. And then what we want to do is underneath that, we're going to have it set a certain thing so that the jellyfish will hover down the screen and look like a turtle swimming through the water past all those jellyfish. And so what we want is if you go to your variables menu, You should see a variable there that says speed. So we want our set speed to. You see a block that says set speed to. That's the way. Click that in underneath. And then another random numbers block. And you can choose any sort of numbers that you want, but they've both got to be minus numbers this time. So they've got to be a minus, like a, the, the biggest number, which is counterintuitive, should be minus one. And then we need another number that's a like a, a bigger minus, if you know what I mean. So we want a more negative number. So minus 10 or minus 20, although minus 20 would be crazy fast. So let's test that. That'd be cool. That might be a really nice like bonus feature. You can make those ones like a little bit different. So what we've got now is we've got our jellyfish, which will appear. It'll go to a random spot at the top of our screen somewhere, and then it will set its speed to a number, and it's going to drop down. So we need a forever block. If you go to controls and grab a forever. Okay. So That's it. And so we forever want it to be changing its its vertical position, which is its Y value, by that number speed. So if you go to motion, you'll see a change Y by block. Drag that one in and clip it into your forever. Awesome. And then back to your variables so we can hover, we can pull in our little speed shaped bubble into that 10 where change Y by is. Change Y by speed. Cool. So it's going to pick a random number each clone, and each clone will move down the screen by that pace. And then we want it to wait a little bit, so it should move those steps and wait and move those steps and wait. And we only want that wait to be very small, so like 0 0.1 is probably the best number to use. Awesome. Cool. And so it's always going to be hovering down our screen now as we go. Right? So if you click the green flag, we should see some clones start to drop down. Give it a test and see what we get. Hey, there they go. Cool. So we're starting to get clones drop down. That's awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. So you can stop that one now. Just click the little stop sign. Sorry, what were you going to say? Um, we need to like, do something like that so they don't just collect up at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Well done. That's exactly what we'll do now. I love that. So what we'll do is if you click stop, you've got that. That's cool. So what we want is if the jellyfish gets to a certain point beneath the middle of our screen, we want it to disappear. So grab an if block. and another less than operator from our green menu. Perfect. So minus 180 is probably the lowest Y value that you'd want to give that jellyfish at any point. So if you pop that in the second hole, and then from the motion menu, you'll see a Y position bubble-shaped block. You can drag that into the first hole. 
And so once it gets to the bottom, what do you want it to do? Uh, explode. You can make it explode. We can totally do that if you want. So we'd need to add uh, something. We need to add a new costume for it. So if you go to costumes, and then you should be able to add down the bottom. You'll see a little face. Uh, looks like a little bear face. Yeah. So what we'll do is, oh, you can just paint that one. So if you want to edit that now, you can draw an explosion over the top of it. Make like a red explosion or something like that. Something that looks different. Uh, that's all right. So if you make sure you grab the paintbrush, that's the way. And then we'll draw some stuff over the top that makes it look like it's exploded. Here we go. Yeah, bam. Uh, awesome. Uh, stuff. Amazing. I love it. That's brilliant. That's so cool. So are, are you happy with the way that looks? Are you happy with the explosion it's got now? Mm. I mean, yeah, feel free. Yeah, there we go. Now you're talking. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. I love it. So if you head back to your code now, what we'll do is we'll slide in a looks block, which will be switch costume to or just next costume will work just as well. So if we grab next costume, yeah, yep, exactly. and then have a weight underneath because if we just get rid of it straight away, you won't see that costume change. So throw a weight in for a little patch of time, right? In a video game, like 0.5 of a second is quite a long time. So if you throw in so, so like a fraction of a second kind of weight underneath the next costume, that's the way. And then you want to delete this clone. It's the last one in your control menu. It's just above when you get to sensing. You'll see delete this clone. This one? That's the one. Perfect. So if you click the green flag now, we should see your jellyfish start swimming down the screen. When they get to the bottom, they'll explode. But they're already exploding. Interesting. So what we need to do then, that means that we need to change back to our first costume. So when I start as clone, go back up to the top of your script. Uh, so the next script down, the little when I start as clone script, and we're going to have to do a set costume to the first costume. That's the way. So above the show block and straight underneath the start script, you want set costume to costume number one. That's the way. There we go. Try it now. Should fix that problem. There we go. And they get to the bottom and they should explode. Okay, so what we've got is we've got them disappearing off the bottom of our screen. So if you change that Y position number to something slightly closer to zero, so maybe 170 or 160, we should be able to see them explode before they disappear. We have it up. That's the way. Let's see what they do. Yeah, they explode. There we go. Nice. That's a top addition. I love the exploding jellyfish. That's made my day, I tell you. All right. So we've got them going, they get to the bottom. If you don't catch them, they explode, which is really cool. Um, and so what we want them to do is the next part we need to add is what do you think? What's the next thing? We're missing something about this game because we've got a turtle and we've got jellyfish. The water bottle. Yeah, we could do the water bottle. Absolutely. We can pop that in. So we can start having the water bottle spin down the screen. So if you go to your water bottle sprite. Yeah, I'm on it. Cool. Then what we need to do is we need to have a couple of different scripts on it. So one of the ones we want is basically exactly the same as the one from your jellyfish. So if you go to the jellyfish scripts, you can drag them over to the water bottle. We're going to cheat. We're going to work smarter, not harder. So you want your when green flag clicked block, yep, and your when I start as clone. Perfect. And two. Right. Both of them are Okay, cool. So the only difficulty we're going to have is if you go back to your water bottle now, we've told it to change costume when it deletes its clone, right? But it doesn't have another costume. Did you want to make these explode as well? Uh, yeah. Cool. So go to your costumes block, and then all you need to do is the same thing we just did. So copy that costume, duplicate that costume, and then make this second one explode. Okay. Let's do it. Wait, wait, wait. No 
still in it. Needs to be just another explosion. That's cool. Yeah, that's it. I'm a big fan of making stuff explode myself. Hang on. Stuff seems. Um, what other colours in the explosion? Right, orange. some orange lines and um, yeah awesome now you're talking that's okay, cool wicked so if you click the green flag we should start seeing jellyfish and water bottles start coming down the screen and exploding when they get to the bottom all right yeah maybe it already explodes. Okay, so let's have a look at your top block there for the costumes and make sure that it's got the right costume selected for your water yeah. bottle. We want it to be the first water bottle costume. That's the way. And the next costume. Okay. That's right. So that should, yeah, that should do it now. So if, there we go. Boom. Boom. Yeah, now you're talking. So that happens when you copy scripts across from another one. If you've got something set in it, like the costume block, if it's not the right name, it won't know what you mean. And so we still had it set to our jellyfish costume, and we need to change it to the name of our bottle costume. But that's all sus now, so that's cool. Um, what's the next thing in our game? So we've got things dropping. We've got a turtle. What's missing? Um, the health. Like, uh, when you eat a jellyfish, you get more health. And after the bottles, you lose some health. Absolutely. So you've got your plastic bottle selector. So let's start there because that's fine because the script is exactly the same. So we can just copy it straight across from our water bottle. So we're going to make a new one here that starts off with when I start as clone. So go to your controls blocks. Third from the bottom, you'll see when I start as clone. And then we want to forever again underneath that one. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then we want an if. So we want it to be if you're touching the turtle then I need you to change my health by something. So we grab an if block, and then we need a sensing block from our light blue menu. That's it. And you'll see one that says touching stuff. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it says right now. You see it's like a gem shaped one. I'm not sure what you have in your block, but yeah, that's it, touching, cool. And then make sure that it says turtle inside that pull down menu. Okay, so, um. This is a water bottle, so it's always going to take away some health. So it's going to need like um, change health to um, five minus. Yeah, change health by minus something. Like I'd have like a slightly bigger number. Like I reckon if you're a turtle and you munch on a jellyfish, that's nice for one meal. But as soon as you eat a plastic bottle, that's like five meals you've just sort of ruined for yourself. So you want a slightly bigger number than, than minus one in our change health for the water bottles. And then the oh, next thing we'll do is once that, what do you reckon? How about minus five or six? Perfect. That's what I would have gone for as well. And then underneath that, we want it, once your turtle's eaten it, we need it to disappear. It needs to look like it's been eaten. So we want it to delete our clone from the controls menu. This one. Yeah. That's the one. Cool. So now we can check, but the problem we'll have is that if you just go straight for the water bottle now, your health is going to go below zero instantly and it will kill the game. So we can do a test if you like. Try and chomp on a water bottle, but bear in mind that it will stop your game straight away. Yeah. Yeah, it killed me. Cool. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. It's, it's, it, that's not great, but that's what we want to have happen, so that's a win. So the next thing we're going to do is grab that same script and drag it onto your jellyfish. The one we just made. Copy it onto your jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's the way, and then go to your jellyfish and change the health. So, change health by one, yeah, I reckon. Okay, cool. So, this time when we do our demo, pop it out to full screen. So, in the top right of your corner of your screen, there you'll see it's got the four that's it perfect green flag. And off we go. Yeah, I must have got hit by a water bottle. Like a stray water bottle. That's all right. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's see what happened there. So run it again and we'll see if we can get it to go. 
There we go. How's it going up? Uh, yeah, I died. Oh, bummer. That's all right. It's, it's, it's working. It's working pretty well. And the ones you miss, are they exploding as well like we wanted? Yeah, they're exploding. Nice. Let me forward. Yeah, get that jellyfish. Yeah. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. That was awesome. That was really cool. Was there anything else you wanted to do to your game? Do you want to add anything else to it? or? Um, how about some lasers? Yeah, where do you want the lasers? Uh, well, how about some broccoli lasers that shoot at the water bottles? Yeah, we can add those. We can totally add those. You'll need to make a whole new sprite for those, though, I reckon. How will we control? Or do you want to, like, shoot the turtle to shoot the broccoli laser? Um, so we can have the broccoli laser attached to the turtle. Nice. All right, I think I, know how to, I think I know how to do this. So what you want to do is go to your turtle and add and duplicate that costume. We're going to add another costume to it that's going to have like some crazy bright colored broccoli laser. <laughs> so duplicate that costume. Okay. Yeah, and then we need to like add a laser that's going to come out the front of the turtle. And it needs to be a color that like doesn't exist in our game. Okay, just a minute. Um, all right, it'll take a while. The broccoli laser is complicated. So we want a laser beam that like ejects from the front of the turtle. We need to have like a whole beam that's coming out. And what we're going to do with it is when that beam touches the water bottle, it's going to destroy that clone for you. So we're going to have the water bottles checking to touch the color of your laser. So it can't be a color that's like the backdrop or the turtle or anything like that. Okay, I'm just looking. I don't need a dark green. Yeah, cool. The stem and then some broccoli that's trees and maybe black line to one. Cool. Okay, cool. There, the broccoli laser is ready. Nice. All right, so if you zoom out a bit, let's make the broccoli laser a little bit longer, I think. We want it to stick out the front of our turtle. So zoom out your costume a little and we'll add that laser to be just a little bit bigger. There we go. So add some more laser out the front. We want it to get good in front of that turtle's face so that he's not... Okay, shooting the turtle. So, let's see. You could use a square, right? If you drew a square, yeah, that had like black internals, you could sort of like drag that square out long and in front of your turtle. Okay, now let's draw. Uh, not in there. But that's right, that's the one. So down the bottom there, if you use the square tool, you can actually draw, oh, that's, that works too. Yeah, there we go, nice big fat lines from the pen. black okay the broccoli laser is ready awesome cool and so what's going to happen is when we push we're going to do a thing that says when i press spacebar i want you to switch to this costume and then we're going to see if our bottles are at all touching black they're going to disappear so that's cool so let's go back to our code for our turtle all right uh sure so and we're um, gonna that's it space key Yep. And then um, switch costume. Yep. And then um, fire, bro fire broccoli laser. So that switching the costume is firing the broccoli laser, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a switch over to have a bro broccoli laser on its back with a little beam sticking out, and we're going to have it switch back after a certain period of time. So we need a little weight in there underneath the one you've got. So if you grab a weight that sort of waits for half a second or something like that, something short, because we don't want to have to sit with the broccoli laser out all the time. We and then have it... Shoot some broccoli. And we some can. Broccoli cutting out. I, yeah, we could do that. We'd have to have it clone a new sprite and do stuff like that. Um, so let's see, how would we do that? We'd have to make it when it is pressed. We'd have to do a broadcast. Yeah, I've done that before. Cool, okay. So underneath that weight, I'd pop a broadcast message. We'll need to make a new message. Broadcast mess. Broadcast blocky laser one. Perfect. Yeah. 
Cool. We need like um, we need to draw some broccoli. That's correct. We do. We need to make a new sprite that's got some broccoli on it. Great. Broccoli girl. Stuff. I'm getting there. That's cool, eh? Yeah. There's no worries. It's looking good. It's looking good. <laughs> I'm used to doing scratch on the iPad, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it easier yeah. on the iPad, do you think, or easier here on the computer? Uh, probably easier on the iPad. Okay. I tend to do a lot more of it on the computer than the iPad. It's rare that I do scratch on the iPad, so like it's interesting to see the contrast. What do you find easier about working on the pad? Because I mean, you can you can see what you're drawing on your finger. Do you know you're like drawing there because you're used to like using pencil, like drawing on paper with it, and this is like doing on a metal thing, no traces in it, just randomly appears on the screen. Sure. Do you have a stylus for your tablet? Like you have one of those pens that's specifically used for touching the screen with, or do you just draw with your finger? Yeah, but I lost a few times, so now I'm banned. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, no, I consistently lose styli. That's why, you know, I just don't buy them anymore because I know I'm going to lose it 10 minutes from now. The other thing I also do is I keep thinking they're pens, and so I take them out with places I'm going, and I go to write stuff with my pen and realize I don't actually have a pen. I've got a stylus, and so I can't write in my paper book either. So they just confuse me now, so I don't even bother with them anymore. Cool. So have you got your broccoli? How's it looking? Hey, there we go. Uh, Multicolored broccoli. Okay, there you go. Wicked. Okay. That's cool. So the first thing we want to do is make it broccoli size because if you can see inside your stage, that's like the world's largest broccoli right now. So go to size, that's the way, and shrink it down. Let's see, we'll have to play with the number a little bit, I reckon, to get it right. But whatever size that's you'd that. like your broccoli to be. Yeah, it's going to be like, um, it's gonna be like um, you know, maybe not 30. About uh, 10. Should hey, there we go. Enough? How's right. that? Okay. You happy with that size? Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool. So what we want to do now is when it receives the message broccoli laser one, so you see when I receive message, Yeah. we want yeah. it to go to, so we want to make sure that it's hidden. So you click hide in your looks menu because we don't want it to sort of like appear and sort of like be there already. We want it to sort of come across invisible and then appear. Cool. And then we want it to go to your turtle. So wherever your turtle is, we want your broccoli to go to the turtle and appear right there. And that's in our motion menu. Uh, go to. Go to. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Then we want it to show. So we want it to be invisible, go to where the turtle is, appear, and then we need to zip up the screen. Uh, show. What does zip up the screen mean? So we need it to move, we need it to change its Y value, so we're going to have it do it a bunch of times. We're going to have a forever. Let's say forever. Because we want it to, move. that's exactly right. Let's and we want it to change Y. y. Perfect. And then we need it to, if it's touching a water bottle, so we want it to say, Oh, actually, we can do that on the water bottle. We'll do that on the water bottle side. So let's test that first. So if you click the space bar, what happens? Uh, wait, hang on. That's what I was like. We'll fix that in a minute. Let's just check to make sure our broccoli's going where we want it to go. But then we clone it, like add multiple broccolis. We can do, but if you start, we can add, we can definitely clone it if you want to. So if you go back to your broccoli. Yeah. So what we want it to do is, oh, I know how we do this. So uh, grab a when green flag clicked. Okay, so when green flag clicked. Yeah, got it. And then a forever and go to turtle. Forever, go to turtle. Okay. 
Go to top. Okay. Cool. So what we've got now is whenever you click the green flag, the broccoli is going to stick to your turtle like glue. Wherever your turtle goes, the broccoli will be stuck to it. All right. And then so what we needed to do. That's okay. Yeah. So that's what we, that's pretty much what we wanted to do. That's fine. And then the next thing we're going to have it do is because we've just counted our old thing. So when you push space bar, it won't go anywhere because it's forever going to turtle. So what we needed to do is when I receive that message, you can pull that other script, just unclip it from your when I receive block. Just don't remove it. Just unclip it so it's uh, free floating. Oh, no, the other one, the other one where it says hide. Oh, right. Um. Yeah, cool. Uh. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and so what we want now is when I receive that, you want it to uh, create a clone of myself. So when I receive broccoli laser one, um Yep. Create, create clone create of myself. Laser. That's the one. Forever? No, no, no. Just once. Ah. So that's uh, so clip that to underneath your yellow one. Cool. Um pull the next bit off actually. We only need this to be we'll, we'll add that to a new script. So where it says go to, pull that off, unclip that from what we've got there. That's it, because that's going to be a when I start as clone script. So that'll be our when I start as clone script. Okay, so uh, when I start as clone, mm -hmm. hide, go to turtle, show forever, change wire by chat. Yep. And the other thing I would do is I would put a hide block underneath your when green flag clicked so that the, the broccoli that's stuck to the turtle is always invisible. Um. Okay. Yeah. There. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. So now, if you try it, let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, I think it works. Okay. So it shoots the broccoli, but nothing's happening when it touches the water bottle, right? No, it's only to like go into the water bottle. Like, yeah. Okay, that's right. So when we go to the water bottle, cool. So, uh, and so we want, that's it, you got it. If touching water. So you want it to be okay. if touching, and then we want to pick a color that's in your broccoli. If touching a uh, color. That's the one. That's like a light green. Yeah. So you can use the little eyedropper if you want to choose a colour. So there's a little eyedropper picture at the bottom of that. That's it there. And if you go across, you should be able to choose it. Oh, we don't have a broccoli on screen. That's a broccoli colour though. Cool. Choose that. Yeah. Cool. And so when it's touching that colour, we want it to delete this clone. Okay, delete this. Delete this clone. Yeah, I've got it. Cool. And you can slide that whole if statement into the forever above it. Yep, perfect. Let's test it. Let's see if it works. We should be able to shoot some bottles with a broccoli laser now. I think it's stuck at the top. Okay, so I think what we need to do is, so if you shoot a broccoli laser and then stop the game, we can use the eyedropper to steal a colour straight out of the broccoli. Okay, so, uh, ready? Ah, it removes our clone, okay. So if you yeah. go to, that's it. Uh, you got to, um, how is it? So click, if you go to looks now, so choose your broccoli sprite. Look. Uh, broccoli sprite, yeah. Broccoli yeah, 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 and then go to looks and just click show while the game is stopped. And it should bring your broccoli sprite up so we can see it. There it is. Okay, so now what we'll do, yeah, yeah, that's it. Perfect. Yeah, shift it out so we can get hold of it. Now go to the so water bottle. Color. Right. That's so the way. And then so you can just click the touching color, color inside that brick. You can just do it with the one you've used in your code already. That's the way. An eyedropper and choose the broccoli. I can see this yes. One. Now we're talking. Touching broccoli, delete this okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, let's try it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I died. Oh, they're not deleting. Why are they not deleting? Because we need to do it on the, uh, this one as well. If touching. We shouldn't have to. Although we on? could. Mm, that would be. Yeah, we could do it that way, actually. So if you had an if touching. But there's still a clone of the bottle. So that's the tricky thing, because it'll be touching the clone of the bottle rather than the bottle itself. Hmm. Hmm. How do we do that? Let's try. Yeah, give it a go. Why not? Can't hurt. Right. Then, um, wait a second. And. Delete this plane. Hang on. Where is it? That was it. And um, this goes here. Right. What about this? Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. That's it. So we want. Yeah, forever. Oh, you probably want that outside your if, I think. That's the way. And then uh, attack and then, two. So when I start as clone, yeah, yeah. When I start as clone, it's down here. Yeah, no, that's cool. You had it right. So I think that's, yeah, that's it. That should work. Okay, let's try, let's try it. it. Yeah, not what? Still Wait, not working. Like that. Why not? I can only shoot one broccoli now, I think. Okay, so let's undo what we just did there. Let's get rid of that bit that we added. Because I think we need to add it to the water bottle. Okay, water bottle. Then yeah, let's go to our water bottle. Oh, hang on a sec. You'll need a part of that code we just got rid of, I think. Yeah. Okay. When I start as clone forever, if, yeah, so if touching color, if you just drag that sensor block in, if touching, and then we'll use the broccoli sprites name. So we only need the blue block, I think, to replace the one that's got if touching color. That's the one. And make sure it says it's got the broccoli's name on there. If touching broccoli, a sprite one. Yeah, that's cool. And if you head back across to your broccoli, and now we're missing a little bit. What did we remove from our script before? There was a bit there. What was that? Uh, start clone. When I start as clone, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I start as a clone, what is that? That would be the broadcast to make the bottle go, wouldn't it? That's clone. Uh, create clone stuff, wasn't that? Uh, no, you wouldn't want it to start as a clone and create a clone of itself. I think we had a broadcast block in there, and it was broadcasting your message about the broccoli laser. Oh yeah. Or when I when I receive, broccoli yeah 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 yeah. Itself. Yeah, then, then when I receive, and then create a clone of myself. Okay, uh, so show create clone of myself. No, we just need it to create a clone. I think. So under controls, create clone of myself. Okay. That's it. Cool. All right. So let's check it. Let's see if that works. It works. Nice. Solve. Awesome. So the only thing we want to do now is I think if you get rid of that show inside our when I receive message, it will mean that the broccoli will hide again. Because at the moment, you've got a turtle with broccoli stuck to its back. <laughs> Wait, isn't that a broccoli loader? Sure. Why not? I love it. It's a feature, not a bug. Click the green flag. Let's see if we can get it to work. Oh, look out, look out. Ah, uh, got you. Go <laughs> down. Okay, let's see. Water bottle captain. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there's one. Get that slow one. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Broccoli laser for the win. Okay. Nice. That's amazing. That's so cool. Was that yeah. good? Was that fun? Yeah. That was yeah. cool. I love the broccoli laser. That was a huge addition to the game. That made it heaps more fun. Wait, don't we need a dead face when um, the turtles swallow the bloody bottles? Yeah, we can do that. Go back to your code. Um, duplicate this one. So go back to your code. Yeah, make a new costume, like a dead turtle costume. Okay, let's see. Like... Ne never thought I'd say those words in my life. Make a dead turtle costume. But yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay. So, uh... Dead turtle costume. Dead turtle costume. I love it. All right, back to our code. And so this one's really easy. You really just need it to. So like when it touches the bottle, when your health goes below zero, you want it to change costume. So yeah. above where it says stop all, just go switch to costume X, whichever the costume is that we've got the name for. So it should be costume two, I think. Yeah, is it there? No, yeah. we want it for when your health goes below zero, right? Yeah, so that one there. And then choose yeah. that. That's cool. Okay. And then you want to have a bit of a weight so that you can, oh no, because it will stay there. But the thing you do need to do is make sure you're not the dead turtle when the game starts. Yeah, so you, um, when the game starts, like, where's the one click? Just so you've got that one, that's it, yeah, yeah, under your green flag. Just change your, your looks back to your costume one so you don't have a dead turtle to start with. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. Okay, so um, just turtle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, let's have a look. <laughs> and then And then make sure you eat a plastic bottle. Hang on. Oops. Yeah, I died. But the, nice. um, the broccoli still sticking to me. So you can do that as well. So if you go down to when you're dead, underneath change costume, you could um, grab that if statement and drag it onto your broccoli. Okay. So, so where it says if health gets less than zero, just drag that if and copy it onto the broccoli. Yep. Grab the broccoli. And now grab that statement we just copied in and put that... Uh, where are we going to put that? Yeah, you can just put it under a green flag. Yeah, so just, uh, yep. Yeah. And then instead of switch to costume, just have it hide. Okay. Okay, so then hide. Yep, yeah, and that will remove the broccoli. Oh, thanks, Trent. That's a kind statement. All right, let's have a look. What do we got? Okay. okay, so normal turtle, jellyfish health goes up. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why is the broccoli there? It's not going to us. Why is it not forever going to us? It killed one now. It's on us now. It was on us. That's interesting. I wonder why it wasn't going to us. If you grab that if statement out... Okay. And put it under its own green flag. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, I just deleted it. Made That's okay. Do Control Z, bring it back. Or Function Z on the Mac. Oh yeah, you could just drag it over. It's on jellyfish. Uh, it's on the turtle, I think. Okay, turtle. That's it. You should, in theory, have it here. Right there. Yeah, that should that should fix it, I think, because we don't want it connected to anything else. We want it forever to go to us. Yeah, let's try it. All right, let's check it. Let's activate. Hmm. Yeah. Why is it still appearing there? That's weird. It has come to us in a while, but wait, is it become dead, or are there no water bottles or jellyfishes? Hmm. Not sure why. Because we're not getting any more bottles of jellyfish cleaning either, are we? Well, the jelly, they're both cloning forever. Right, I'm going to clone myself. Round to six. Wait, we're going to change to three? Or is it like um, two? You know, slow. Because they should be cloning. They should be doing what we want. Click the green flag again. Let's just see if we start getting bottles and jellyfish. So we do get them. And then we activate the laser. Okay. 
So it's like, that's weird. It's okay now, right? And then we leave it when we die. Because everything is stopped. Then why doesn't it hide? Let's have a look at the broccoli again. It should hide. Let's have a look and see why it's not doing that. Pop that if statement in a forever loop. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know why. Because what? on our broccoli, we haven't told it to hide. We've told it to switch costumes to a costume it doesn't own. But look at... Oh, right. Didn't do that. Can I leave that's right. We'll just do it now. Yeah, yeah. So pop hide in there. Yeah, that's perfect. And then it should hide our broccoli when we die. Alright, we can get rid of the forever loop. Uh, no, nah, pop it around it anyway, just to be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Activate laser. Oh, now we've left it behind again. There's no more broccolis. We're out of broccoli. We need to go to the grocery shop. <laughs> right. I'm not sure why it's doing that. That's really strange. Wait. As soon as we get it to track that, it stops tracking everything else. I wonder. I wonder if anybody who's watching might have the answer. Let's throw it out to the audience and see if anybody who's watching might have a solve for us. I wonder because sometimes when you're trying to debug your code, right, you miss all the problems that you put into them. It's one of the biggest trials of working on your own work is you put the error there, so it's hard to see it. So we've definitely got when green flag click forever go to turtle, don't we? That's definitely on the broccoli. Yeah. But for, but does it mention forever go to turtle um, costume too? That shouldn't be an issue. It should just go to the turtle itself. It shouldn't matter what costume the turtle has on. Uh, I wonder why it's not working. Let's see. See if anybody knows that can help us. Who knows? Right. Can you zoom in a bit for me, Sophie, so I can just have a better look because, you know, I'm old and stuff. If hide... So that's fine because it forever goes to our turtle. Green flag is clicked. It should forever be checking. It might just be a weird scratch bug. Might be. You do get them from time to time. So that looks like it should be fine. So if health is less than zero, hide our broccoli and stop everything. What about here? When I start as clone, hide, go to turtle show, forever change Y by X. That should also be fine. I'm genuinely not sure what the bug is with this one. When green flag pressed. Hmm. And what's that last one? When I receive a message. When I receive broccoli laser one, show, and then create clone. So that's totally fine. We need that. Hang on, there's a show. Show that thing. But well, we need it to show. We're going to run out of broccoli. Uh, maybe we don't. So if you get rid of it, if you get rid of the show, that might be the issue. You might have found it there. So what we've got there is if you get rid of the show, and then when we've got it starting as clone, it definitely says show in that, doesn't it, in the clone? Yeah, yeah. So let's test it again and see if that fixes it. All right. Yeah, I, I died. Okay. That's all right. Have another go. We'll activate the laser. Let's we'll see if we can get it to work. There we go. Laser straight out. Bam. So we move our turtle. Does the la okay? So the broccoli. Oh, I'm just getting broccoli from thin air. Thin water. So, is there a way we could attach the broccoli to the turtle's back, but follow it without? It should be doing that with the forever go to turtle. That should be the thing that fixes that for us. Let's try it. Now it's working. It's working now. Go. It's one of those weird bugs in the machine, I tell you. I don't know why it's working now and it wasn't before. Can you yeah, shoot that bottle that's got it? We can add another bit too that will delete your broccoli clones when they get to the top if you want because yeah. we've got a whole bunch of broccoli hanging around. So in that script down the bottom right there, the one that has like when I start as clone, 
Okay. And then it's like hide that one there. Inside your forever loop, we need another if. And if your Y is above 180, it should delete this clone. If, um, y takes a, it's above. Yeah. And then it's control block for delete this clone. That's it, Y position. And then delete this clone. Cool, let's test it. Let's test the broccoli laser. I think we got, I think we got it. Yeah. And they go. They disappear when they get to the top now. Oops, I think I made just press that yet. Oh. I ate some broccoli though. Alright, so right, that's cool. That was awesome. That was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Threw some curveballs at me there, Sophie. That's great. Stayed there. That's cool. All right. So I think that's all we've got time for today, I'm afraid. Like, we've gone um, and had a great time. But uh, I think we've run out of time. That was amazing. Can you come back on our live stream, please, Sophie? I'd love to have you again. That was amazing fun. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. I mean, we don't have to do it, like, straight away next week, but sometime in the future, I'd love to have you back on. And if you come up with any projects that you want us to run, you can definitely teach me how to make stuff, right? Like, I don't know everything about Scratch. I love it when young people come and show me stuff I didn't know how to do. I'd love so, to um, Awesome. I'd love to have you. It was really, really fun. Like, that's one of the most fun ones I've done. So, um, yeah, let me know. And in the future, we'll have you back on. If you want to make a project, bounce off me in the meantime, right? We can have a chat about it. You can make a thing or I can make a thing and we can run through it together because that was awesome fun. I had an awesome time. Um, Thank thanks for coming along. Thanks for coming along, Sophie. That was wicked. See you later. So there you go, everybody. That was cool, like trying to make that game and then adding other bits to the game. That's the best part about coding, right, is you start with one thing and you want a new thing, and so you work out how that all goes. You throw stuff together. Sometimes it doesn't work, but if you keep plugging away at it, you will eventually work out how to solve your problem. So remember, we've got all of these sorts of projects and more at rpf.io slash home. We're always looking for new stuff that you can share with us if you'd like to be on the stream. Get in touch with us through rpf.io slash home. Show us the projects that you've made that you might be able to teach me something new. Or you can come on and I can teach you something. We're always looking for young people who are interested and involved and would like to get involved with the community a little bit more. So keep following us. Share your work. Keep staying at home and making awesome stuff, everybody. And we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us on this whole thing. See you, everyone.